Alright guys, it is second experiment with uh, live streaming on YouTube. So today we're going to talk about managing your boss. And this came up from a question I got on one of the videos. And the question was from Alfonso Incanesis. Incanesis? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm terrible with pronouncing names. So you're, you're going to have to forgive me because there's nothing else I can do about it. He said, how many years did you have on the street where you felt confident or competent enough to handle anything, any type of call? So here's the thing about that, is that a lot of people will talk about like years on the job as a standard of measure for how competent you are with doing that job, right? And I understand where he's coming from, but here's the thing about years on the job, is that when I started off, when I first got on the street, uh, straight out of like field training, right? Like I knew that I didn't know. You kind of get what I'm saying? Like I knew there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know and so I had to ask people questions. And at that time I was afraid to ask people questions because I was afraid they would think less of me. Looking back, it's simple, right? So if you're new on the job, don't be afraid to ask questions. Everybody would rather you ask questions than you like start making mistakes that they have to fix later, right? The three years in, you know, three years into the job, I felt like I could handle anything, right? I felt like, you know, I knew I had seen everything. Like, I had gone to a lot of domestics. I had been to a few homicides. I had dealt with, you know, criminal sexual assaults and things like that. And I thought that I had seen the majority of what a person could see, right? So, five years on, and I realized that that wasn't the case, right? Like, at three years, you think you've seen it all. In five years, you see some more stuff, and you're like, I've never seen that stuff before. That's weird. That's new. And then, like, when you first start off, you're afraid to ask questions, and at three years on, you don't ask questions, which is always the big mistake of somebody that thinks they know everything, right? Is it like, Three years on, you're pretty confident you don't ask questions anymore. And at five years on, you start seeing other stuff, and you're like, ah, I need to start asking questions. And now I'm at 11 years, right? At 11 years, I know I don't know everything. I know a bit, I know a lot, probably know more than the guy with three years on, but I know enough to know that I don't know it all, right? And there's a lot of guys with specialties and stuff that know all sorts of stuff that I don't know. And luckily, I'm wise enough after 11 years on, I can tell you to go ask those people. And one of those people that you need to be asking is your boss, right? So, as where, you know, whereas one to three years on, you either didn't want to ask the boss or um, you didn't think you had to ask the boss. Now I know I do have to ask the boss, right? And sometimes I'll, I'll call into the office and talk to my boss just to get a second set of eyes because when you're trying to figure out if something's objectively reasonable or what to do with the situation, Having that person to explain the facts of the case to and then confer with is a really great thing. And that's that's kind of the issue with managing your boss, right? Like, your boss can get angry at you about something that you screw up, but if you ask him first and you screw it up, then he can't really get angry with you about messing it up. You know what I mean? And all of us could use a second opinion on stuff. And 11 years on, I need second opinions all the time. So the answer to his question, and a little bit into my own commentary about managing your boss, uh, how many years did you have on the street where you felt confident and competent enough to handle anything, any type of call? I don't know, I'm not there yet. I, I don't think any type of call I'm confident on to handle on my own perfectly. Right? I don't think anybody is. I know guys that have 20 years on. I, I know guys that have 20 years on. Sorry, I'm trying to get this where the connection is good and it's going in and out, Chicagoland stuff, you know. 20 years on the job at like a really nice neighborhood and they'll, they'll be like, I got 20 years on Oak Brook, you know. Okay, well, this is an Oak Brook. This is an Oak Brook type of situation. You handle this like once in Oak Brook. You got other guys that have three years on in a place, you know, like Gary, Indiana, where they've seen, in three years, they've seen what somebody in a nice neighborhood sees in 20 you know what I mean? It's not a function of years. Maybe it's a function of how much time you have on the job. Or maybe it's a matter of knowing what you don't know. A lot of guys get, you know, four hash marks on their arm, you know, one for every five years of service, and they assume that they know everything. 
Well, I guess get two of them on there and they assume they know everything. The wise people, I think, know that they don't know everything and that they need to be able to call in and ask somebody who does know. Uh, it's, it's not beneath anybody to call the detectives and ask them what they think about the situation. It's definitely not beneath anybody to call their immediate supervisor and ask them what they think about the situation. As long as we have the time to do that without, you know, endangering people or, you know, violating the law. But most of the time, luckily, you know, if we have backup, we have other people there, you know, we can figure out what's going on, put the brakes on the situation so we get it sorted to the point where, you know, we've talked to everybody. And then once we put the brakes on the situation, we get people sorted away, then we can call and confer with the boss. Some places take this a little far in that, like, before you make an arrest, you have to call your boss before you bring him into the station. And I, like, why, why do you even hire police at that point? You just hire anybody to do that. But uh, I, I don't think it's beneath anybody. If there's any question, I call him. And, you know, and my bosses, I'll tell you something, 11 years on, and never once have I gotten shit from my bosses about calling to ask a question, and they always thank me when I'm done calling. So that's my rant for the day. I had a little time after court. I figured, you know, everybody liked the live stream last time, so we do it again. Hopefully the connection is good. Because it's a live stream and I like talking with all you guys, I'm going to scroll the top, and we are going to answer questions and comments that people have. I hope this angle's a little better. I went and got a selfie stick and then ripped the stick off the bottom and uh, hooked it onto my old tripod that I used for the camera and just put it on my steering wheel. So, all right, let's see. Hello, hello, hey man, hey, hey, salutations, salutations. Oh, snazzy. Howdy, that's more my speed. Hi, sup? Very good, oh, I like that. Hey, Mac, okay. Hello from Mississippi, hello from, I think I'm in Country Club Hills right now. I'm not sure, actually. I just had to find a tree to sit my car under so that way I wouldn't boil in this car. Oh God, that thumbnail, you're gonna be 300 pounds when you retire. I was 232 pounds at five foot tall before I got this job. No shit. Dude, I can eat. Only thing that keeps me from doing it now is do I work out a lot? And seriously, that's the only thing that keeps me going. I love lifting weights, so we'll call this carb loading. Carb loading. AFC, have you ever considered a Fab Discord server? I am old, and I don't know what that is. So, no. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Hello from Ireland. Ireland! That's a new one. I've never been to Ireland. I hear that the police there are serious. Hi. Kiba, no idea what that means. Just got a job at Krispy Kreme, boys. Oh, only as a summer job. <laughs> Man, I would blow up a balloon if I was at Krispy Kreme. Uh, I'll try to bring donuts to my PD. Cool. It's like Straga, I have no idea what that is. I'm sorry, I don't speak Russian or Ukrainian or whatever it is. I don't speak it enough to even know what language that is. Hey, Tommy, good to see you live. It's nice to see you on here, Lloyd. I enjoyed that flashlight you sent me. Kind <laughs> of wish I hadn't sent it back now, but, you know, anyway. I got stuff uh, coming in from uh, Through Night. Through Night sent a lot of cool stuff. I actually just did a review video for them this morning, so that'll be fun. That'll be coming up. And I got a whole series with uh, Randy Husher, my friend that's the director of security. It's, it's going to end up being like four videos. I intended to make into like an 11 minute video about how to get a job as a security guard. And that dude can just talk and talk and talk. So it's going to be like a string of five videos. All right. Chris Hazley says, love your videos. And I just laughed out loud when you took a bite from that donut. I only got so many of those yet left. I only allow myself one donut a day now. I don't even have that many. But it's a good prop for this. I think people like it. Everyone in the live chat. There's a tornado coming to my house. Uh, you may want to go to the basement. Rest in peace. That's probably the funniest comment of the day. Tornado has lifted. Good luck with that. How many cows did you lose this time? Oh my god, damn. Damn, what are we going to do with you? How many years till retirement, Dan? 65 in California? They even let you retire in California anymore? Got going three dead. Greetings from Denmark. Damn. All right. I never thought that I would hear from people 
when I started doing YouTube, I just dropped chalk all over my seat. My beautiful car. I never thought when I started doing YouTube that like I'd have people watch me from Denmark. How's family life off duty as a cop? Uh, can the bad guys find out where you live? They can. They can. In fact, people people have told me about that later. Like, you should make fun of sovereign citizens on your channel. I'm like, but it's so easy. Yeah, they could. But here's the thing: you can't you can't live your life afraid that somebody's going to assassinate you, right? If somebody's going to assassinate me. There's plenty of people that have much better reasons to assassinate me than this channel. And like, guys finding me from work. Like, what, what is that going to accomplish, right? What's that going to accomplish for me? So somebody comes to my house, and kills me. You know what my friends would do to them? Come on. That that would be that's the dumbest idea ever. Right? Like that's the thing in Mexico, because I guess they don't like they don't go find the guys because they're connected or whatever. It's not a thing in the US. You don't you don't you come if you came to a cop's house and murdered them, yeah, that's I'll tell you this much, that's not gonna turn out well for you. Not gonna turn out well for you. Just see what that that one guy, yeah, the guy that went rogue in California and started killing cops. They hold them up in his house. The SWAT team surrounded his house when they found out where he was at and burnt it down with him in it. I mean, if they want to come find me, that's that's probably about what's going to happen when they did that, so I'm not, not super worried about it. Greetings from Serbia. Ah! Serbia. I actually have a friend of mine who's a sergeant who is, like, huge into Serbian nationalism. He is a riot. And he loves guns. I think he actually loves guns more than I do. He's a good dude, though. Uh, Tyler's Lombard. I don't know where Lombard's at. I don't know where Lombard's at. 17 years in tough parts of town, and I know I have. 2450082. That is the most abstract name ever. 17 years in tough parts of town, and I know I don't know it all. It's a wise man. Good info. I know for a fact at least 20 people I've slapped with slivers know where I where I live. Thank you, Dan. He doesn't seem real worried about it either. <laughs> pork chop, handcuffs, pork chop, hand, handcuffs. Uh, the guy from Serbia retracted his message. I'm sorry it's a little delayed because I do the whole thing and then come back and talk to you. Uh, eight limbos of fire. What is the biggest thing you wish someone would have told you before you started? It's hard to remember that back that far. You know what I mean? Like, somebody told me before I started. I would have to think about that. I can make that like a whole video on its own. What do I wish people had told me before I started? Uh, I wish people had told me to buy everything big. Right? So I was the guy that went into the uniform supply house, and my only experience with uniforms was like going to private school and being in the Boy Scouts and stuff. And so when I went to the uniform supply house, they were like, oh yeah, you want to get the shirt? Oh, we're going to make sure it fits, and the pants fit, and then your jacket, make sure your jacket fits. So you're in there, and like, I'm in there in like a t-shirt and jeans, putting a jacket on, right? And uh, nobody tells you that like, you're going to wear all this stuff at the same time, right? And when you buy pants... You better be able to fit like long johns under them if you're above the Mason Dixon line, right? I'm in like the Chicago land area, so like you're gonna get cold if you don't have long johns on in the winter. So I wish people had told me, like, don't buy all of this stuff to fit you, buy it oversized. But they're like, oh, you want it to look good, you want to look crisp at the academy? No, 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 no. Buy everything like at least one size bigger. Plus, you're gonna get fat. I mean, it's, that's the reality of getting older. You know, everybody wants to pretend, especially on YouTube, right? I don't want to pretend they're going to be 25 forever. That's just not true. Right, guys are like, when I was in the army, we carried 90 pounds of stuff, and you should carry more on your plate carrier. Listen, dude, I'm not 19. I'm not 19. I'm like 35 years old. <laughs> and I'm not getting younger. And none of us are. So, like, buy your clothes a little large. Those pants, like, you get those, like, $90 blower pants, like, wool ones. Those last a long time. Two or three years, you might gain weight. You're probably going to have to layer stuff. If you put your uniform on, so you got two shirts and a vest and then stuff in your pockets and then you're going to put your winter coat over the top buy that sucker bigger that's what I wish people had told me can the bad guys find your address where you live does that jeopardize your family safety while you are away working that's a valid question uh, my family safety when I'm away working uh, yeah my 
my wife is terrified. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's not. And then my father-in-law in the house? No. No, I don't know. I, I am probably the least of anybody's worries between the dogs, my wife, and the father-in-law. I'm gonna come be there, being like, "Yep," and now you're under arrest too. <laughs> Is, are you bleeding out of your ears? It wouldn't turn out real well for him, so I'm not particularly worried about that. Happy Monday. Yeah, it's my Saturday. AFFT, have you ever considered a fan Discord server? I think you already asked that, and I have no idea what that is, so I don't know. Um, Missouri here. Time on doesn't equal experience. You heard all the time in the fire service. It's true. People, you could you could work in a small bedroom community in the fire service and, and see like four fires in 10 years. And you could work like on the south side of Chicago and have two or three of them a week. Big ones. When do you plan on retiring? As soon as I can afford it. And that's the real answer to that question. How much do you know about U.S. Army MPs? I know they aren't actual law enforcement. See, that's the thing is that Army MPs are law enforcement when they're on base, is my understanding, right? And they're covered under HR 218 to, to a certain extent. I know they're working on that. I think the Air Force, one of my buddies is an Air Force MP, and uh, he has an HR 218 card. And uh, I'll tell you something, I we don't have a lot of military personnel down here in the South Chicagoland area, so they normally get a lot of courtesy from us. Uh, but any, if I go to an air base or, you know, a military base, I'm on their turf, so it doesn't... Like, I never really got into the pissing matches with people about jurisdiction and stuff. You can see in other videos, give a shit about jurisdiction. But, uh, you know, if they're, the, if they're the police on the military base, then they're the police somewhere. And I think most of that comes, most of their non-police power stuff comes from what the military policy says about them. It doesn't come from the law. In fact, my understanding of state statutes in Illinois is if it wasn't for the military's law that they have jurisdiction over their people even though they're not working and can tell them, no, you can't do that under penalty of, you know, Uniform Code of Military Justice, my interpretation of Illinois law would be that they would be, you know, considered law enforcement here of some, of some degree. You know, they would be peace officers here. But it's what the military tells them that keeps them from being. I know that's not true in every state, but I don't know. I mean, like, I was never an MP. I was never in the service. People talk, they talk shit about MPs all the time. I'm like, I don't know. All the ones I know are nice. They just seem like guys doing a job. It might be young guys doing a job, but they're just young guys doing a job. They're just guys doing a job. Cheers from Idaho. Nice to have you. Kind of off topic, but what do you think that the experience of the police, the lower 48 compares to the policemen in Alaska, being that that could be days away or just no backup at all. You know what? We have sheriff's deputies here that, like, my one buddy, he's a state trooper out by, like, Peoria, right? And he could be on a call and not have backup, you know, for, like, 20 minutes to half an hour. And it's kind of like, have you ever taught, you ever seen, like, the interviews with astronauts? And they said, like, in space, an inch might as well be a mile. If you're, you get out of the spacecraft and you're an inch from structure, it might as well be a mile because you can't get traction and move toward it. There is no, like, swimming in space. So, like, it doesn't matter how far away if you're not close enough to grab, right? And it's the same thing with backup. You know, like, the Alaska State Troopers, I mean, those are, those are brass balls, right? You're, like, days away from backup. But realistically, if your backup's a half an hour away, you can get killed many times over in half an hour. The real concern, I would think, having, not being a police officer in Alaska, I would think would be if you got hurt, um, you know, a sheriff's deputy here that's half an hour or an hour time until uh, they get back up, you know, they're, they're already outside the golden hour for getting to the hospital, but if you're days away from legitimate medical attention, you get a gunshot wound, man, that's, that's very serious, that's very serious, so that, I, I'll tell you that that would be one safety concern I would have if I was going to be like an Alaska State Trooper would be how far away when I'm days away from backup am I am from legitimate like a trauma center level one trauma center and it's nice here in Chicagoland area like when I work I'm minutes from a trauma center a level one trauma center Christ Hospital like you have like a 98% chance if you come into Christ Hospital sucking air you have a 98% chance of living for the experience maybe not doing great but you're going to live for the experience being days away. I, I couldn't even imagine doing that. Watching you eat that stack of sugar makes me a little wet. Oh, Dan. UK. Thank you for watching from the UK. What other donut do you like other than the one you just ate? I also like Boston cream donuts, and I really like apple fritters. UK. Thank you, Dan. 
would send you another. I don't need another flashlight, Lloyd. I, it was a very nice flashlight. Like, the Phoenix PD-35 was really nice, and if I still had it, I would probably still use it, but I don't have it. I've got a lot of other stuff coming through, and everybody wants to send me flashlights, and through night so far has been one of the better ones that have sent me stuff. Some of them I've actually just sent back. A little, some of like little keychain lights. Please don't send this to me. I don't need another keychain. Like, like, 700 lumens on keychain, button cell batteries, and like, this is weird Chinese stuff. Hi from New Hampshire, love your videos. Thank you. Uh, which one is more important in law enforcement, cardio or weightlifting? I think you have to be balanced, which is kind of where I fall off the wagon with uh, working out. And the older you get, you kind of have to do what you can do, right? Like when you're in your early 20s, you want to be strong and you want to be able to do cardio because you don't want to be winded out when you're doing something. Especially, you know, like you get into a foot chase and, you know, you're, then you got to fight with somebody at the end of it. But as you get older, the important thing is to just stay in some kind of shape, right? Like, you, if you can weight lift, like I can weight lift and I really can't do cardio that well. You know, my knees and ankles, I'm getting older. I had original problems with the, I got my knee blown out when I was at the police academy. There's only so much cardio I can do. I can get on an elliptical for a period of time, but there's, there's realistically only so much cardio I can do because I have to go into a gym to do it. But I can do weightlifting, and I can do that when I'm on my lunch, so that's what I do. You know, it's, as you get older, the important thing is to stay working out more than which one is better. Uh, yesterday I picked up a new Smith & Wesson knife with a window breaker and seatbelt cutter, as well as a super bright Smith & Wesson flashlight. I hope that works out for you. UK, UK cops. I've worked, I've gone to trainings with them. I've never been to the UK, so. How many bullets did you shoot on duty greeting shroom uh, I do not talk about use of force incidents. It work. I'm sorry. Uh, use of force is a huge liability issue here in the United States, and so uh, although people say it's safe after seven years, I wouldn't do it. Plus, it's disrespectful to anyone, like the people's families. You know, if somebody passes away, um, regardless of the the means, but if it's if they pass away violently, I don't. I wouldn't want someone talking about how my family member passed away violently on the internet. So I won't do that to other people. I've shot plenty of deer. <laughs> I can talk about that if you want. Most people aren't interested in that. We do have forest preserves around town, and I have, I have shot deer on the job. Deer aren't going to be offended, so we can talk about that, but that isn't really exciting. You just shoot them, you know, right, five, right behind their uh, their shoulder blade, and then they die, and then you, you know, call somebody to come chop them up and eat them. Any good firefighter jokes? I need some new ones. Uh, I pretty much ended it calling them hose jockeys. I don't think you really need more than that. How to be a police detective. I did that video. I just did that video and put it out a couple weeks ago. It should be in one of the playlists, I forget which one, but it's not that far back. You just go to videos and look down, how to be a police detective is on there. Uh, do you think it's a good idea for someone to get into law enforcement with an 18 month old son and a new baby girl or wait? Eh, that's on you, right? Like, I have, I have little kids and I was a cop. Cops have kids all the time. It might be stressful starting a new job, but that would be any new job. Well, from the communist state of New Jersey, security guard in New Jersey while waiting on civil service for fire, we're all here waiting until the guy died in the expense here. Well, good luck. UK cops still don't know what you're trying to say. Hey, from Caden. Hey, Caden. If you met more money, would you lateral? If it meant more money, would you lateral to another department? At this point, I'd be hard pressed to make more money entry level than what I have on. 11 years on and field training, which I get paid a little extra to do field training, so wouldn't make sense for me to move now. I've looked around, there's only a couple places that pay more and they wouldn't be a good be a good fit for my skill sets, I don't think. If I found one, I would move. A Discord service, basically a chat room in an app called Discord, which allows for interaction with your audience in addition to your YouTube comment section. See, here's the thing, the YouTube comment section really helps. It's called engagement. So please, talk all you want in the comment section because the engagement really helps me. I, I, I really, I got this, I got the I got YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and I got my own website, right? So like, I'm getting emails from the website, from the little connect with me thing, and I've got Instagram, and Facebook, and YouTube comments. It's already too much to take care of, which is why I started doing the live streaming. Hopefully you guys all like it. Uh, cop brother is extremely strong. You can kill a cop, every guy in his agency will hunt you down. Probably. Uh, so do you think life of a cop is more dangerous than other occupations being a cop more dangerous? So, Yahoo Ida King. Sir, do you think the life of a cop is more dangerous than other occupations? Being a cop more dangerous to your life than other occupations? Well, that depends on what occupation. There's a lot of things that are more dangerous statistically than being a cop, but you have to realize that all police jobs are not created equal, right? 
Uh, just like, you know, being a carpenter isn't always just being a carpenter, being a welder isn't always being a welder. You can say like, well, a welder job isn't very dangerous. Well, if he's welding a ship together, it can be extraordinarily dangerous. So that depends on where you're working. Uh, where I'm working as an above average level of danger involved with being a cop, but it's not true everywhere So statistically speaking, it's not exceptionally dangerous um, Because a large portion of police officers work in areas where they're unlikely to encounter Not that it couldn't happen, but they're unlikely to encounter extraordinary violence um, And some people like people working, in, you know on the south side of Chicago Have a very high likelihood of encountering that type of violence and getting hurt. So it depend on where you work Let's not act like MJ didn't have a Hitler stash for like two rings there. I don't know what he's talking about. Skybearer. I don't know. I guess somebody's spamming. I didn't know it was. I don't know what like that. he's talking about. What other career would you have taken? Uh, I was a truck driver before. I'd probably go back into that. That was fun. Maybe I've, I've often thought about starting my own tow truck company. I'm not going to lie. I'd be allowed to take my... Indian food with me to work, like in a, t in a tiffin. Uh, I, I eat whatever I want at work because I'm in a car alone. So if you're in a car alone, you can eat your Indian food at work. They might not be happy about it if you put it in the microwave at the station, though. Who invented the county issued ghetto street howitzer? See, I don't think the ghetto street howitzer was something that, um, it was invented at any particular time, right? Because, like, law enforcement's been using shotguns for a long, long time since they were, like, blunderbuss-type shotguns. Because it's just the shotgun is the most popular, you know, weapon for anybody, anywhere, really. I mean, you look all over the world, and that's... If, if it's a normal person, like, they're not a soldier, and they own a gun, it's very likely going to be a shotgun, right? I could look back at that. That's That would be a really good question for, like, Ian over at Forgotten Weapons. I watch his stuff all the time, but... If you're into that type of thing, we'll watch Ian's stuff, because I'm sure he would be able to tell you when the first pump-action shotguns were. I know they were just prior to World War I, when repeaters were first first starting to happen in the 18, like, 50s to the 1890s, I think, is when the pump-action shotgun was invented. What's up, brother? How's it going? Well, luckily, not much. These, hey, how's it going? Pretty good. You've been to Tim Hortons Canada Rep. I've not been to Tim Hortons. I have no idea what that is. You still keep that safe life defense body armor. I have one set. Actually, I have two sets of safe life defense body armor. One I kept. One of the standard level 3A I kept. Um, and I have another set that is the 3A plus with the stab rating and the FN57, all that crazy stuff. And if you go to my website, I have the two organizations that are doing a fundraiser for a cop down here that has cancer. And I am. I just bought the tickets for. So as soon as they have a flyer, I'm gonna take a picture of them and put it up there. And if you guys are in the Chicagoland area, I'm. I'm planning on being at that fundraiser. I'm gonna raffle that bus off there. How long have you been in law enforcement? Eleven years. Does your degree help you get to this job? I will be completing my bachelor's in criminology this fall. Will you spend this house more than a degree? Can military candidate outweigh me in hiring? Um. I have a whole video on education requirements, and in the education requirements section, I also talked about. Uh, military background, I suggest you go check it out. It's too expansive of a topic for this. We'll be here for like two hours. Hello from Glendale, Arizona. Hey, what's going on? Security guard checking in. Info in your vids. I am from California. Thanks for your vids. I'm sorry to hear that. What kind of special divisions have you been in besides patrol division? Um, I was in SWAT for a short period of time. I am a training officer. I've been asked if I want to do other things. I did uh, like a month and a half, two months, doing uh, actual undercover work, but undercover work is never as fun as people make it out to be, like people think undercover is like, oh, you're going to go infiltrate this gang, and I was just sitting, pretending to be a utility worker, trying to catch people that were stealing tires off of cars. It was fun, it's cool, I can say I did undercover work, but it wasn't really, they've asked me if I want to go to like, um, detective division, or Attack, which is like our version of like narcotics advice and stuff like that. It's just not for me. Too young for that. It's just, it's just not for me. I like my pants to be tax deductible, so I got time to do that. Sometimes make fun of the transportees when en route to the Sally Port um, pitches. <laughs> no, I try not to say anything to them when I'm driving to the station. That, that just ends up getting me in trouble. If I want to become a Leo, what degree should I focus on? Criminal justice or something else? I, unless the agency that you, for the 900th time, unless the agency 
that you are trying to get a job with requires a criminal justice degree, go get something else, something that will help you outside the law enforcement because you'll learn more about life and it doesn't matter. If they don't say you need a criminal justice degree, you don't need one, you just need a degree, get something else, something else you're interested in that you would do if you weren't a cop. I am a police officer, it's okay for me to carry knuckle dusters when I'm on duty. Good luck with that, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be legal here, I don't know about everyone. Opinion on seasonal officers, is it worth taking a seasonal job to get into police work or should someone just try to go full time only? Depending on your agency, uh, not the agency, but depending on what state you're in, um, like here, the full-timers and the part-timers, there's a very little difference in the base training. So if you get on a job full-time, they're sending you to the academy and then you can lateral to, to part-time. You go, They send you to the academy and you could get lateral to a full-time job somewhere else or with that agency. So then it's definitely worth it. Uh, currently an armed patrol security guard looking to get into law enforcement, DQ'd from one city for my psych results. I think I ran into the psych written questions too much. If you can, any tips? Uh, don't think, don't overthink it. They're asking about stuff you did as an adult. They're not like, they're like, no one cares about stuff you did when you're 14 unless somebody got killed, right? So, like, be reasonable when you're answering the questions. Stay safe. Thank you. What do you think law enforcement will be like in 10 or 20 years? I don't know, but I'm probably still going to be here to find out. I recommend a public service degree like bachelor's in public administration or criminal justice administration. If you want to promote, uh, public administration is probably the way to go. I don't want to promote, so it doesn't matter. Uh, what do you think of the RCMP from Canada? I've never met them, shockingly enough. Uh... I'd be allowed to carry off-duty anywhere in USA, any restrictions, depending on where you work. Um, depending on where you work, your agency is going to decide what you're allowed to carry off-duty. Federal law says you can, given certain circumstances. Uh, hey, Tommy, I'm in California. It's nearly impossible to get a CCW permit in my county for self-defense. Do you have any tips on how to protect myself other than a pocket knife or pepper spray? Right? Um, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, I'm sorry, most of those involved actually putting work and time and effort into it. Probably as much work and time and effort as you should with a gun. I've never understood how people are very hesitant to put time and effort into learning to defend themselves physically. They're willing to put it into, or at least they say they're willing to put it into a gun. I think most people just buy a gun and call it currently uh, Yankee Marshall because he comes from a lot of the same experience that I have, but... Um, he has a lot of different opinions on stuff, and I like people that I kind of can relate to, but challenge my opinions on things. I like him. And he's entertaining, and he makes a lot of, like, midget hooker and gay jokes, which I think is funny. Jokes about him being gay. It's fun. I like him. I see how it is. Skip me. I see how it is. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, just got hired last week. Academy next month. Love videos. Thank you. Some guy was creeping behind you a few minutes ago. You said you were in Chicago on your stay alert and safe. Yeah, I can see myself in the screen here. So I'm in a, I'm in the parking lot of, an, of a business. So he was probably wondering if it was somebody he was meeting. Your kids will follow in your footsteps. Would you want them to? Uh, I think my daughter will probably become going to EMS. She really likes that. You ever flunked a rookie? Yes. Is there any age limit on becoming a Leo? Here it's 35. I'm not sure federally. Your videos from like one PD in Ohio, Chevy and Paul or Crown Victoria, Crown Vic. Do you want to cops cycles? I don't know what that is. Could you tell us a rookie story that is funny? No, I can't. You can see you have a pilot program or cadet program for younger people who want to join. Uh, we have a cadet program, Brian Mac, yes. We use on police in the UK and on the recent attacks. You you could make a whole series of videos on that. I can't cover that here, right? I've only met a few guys from the UK. That's a lot of balls to go at a guy that's got a gun that's shooting people with just a baton. I don't know if I got that kind of balls. Some, some of them are pretty ballsy. My K-900 security guard, really appreciate your videos very much. Take care, stay safe, do the good work. Thank you, Michael. How likely would an older candidate get picked over a younger one? Uh, it depends on your experience level. I don't think it makes that big a difference, at least not here. How many times would you work with another agency why would, how many times would you work with other agencies or why would you? I don't understand. I'm currently a student worker at my university's Department of Public Safety. When applying to an agency, would cadet program be better experience than working at the university? I don't think so. And we're getting to the end. Do you have a canine? No, I don't. My wife is really, really allergic. Otherwise, I would. That's another one. They asked, they've asked me before if I want to have a dog. Hey, you know, we thought about maybe doing canine and she's really, really deathly allergic. So, we can't do it. Hello from Lone Star State. Hey, I like your weather down there. You would think I wouldn't with how hot it is, but it really is a dry heat. 
I enjoy. I went down to Texas one time. I went to Fort Hood. MPs at Fort Hood not have a very big sense of humor about guns, but uh, they were they were respected, respectful. I'll give them that. But uh, the weather was nice when I was down there. Wish your best authoritative talk. Knock that off. Uh, what do you think of what law enforcement will be like in 10 or 20 years? I don't know what law enforcement will be like in 10 or 20 years, brother. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like. I'd be very interested to find out. Um, but no no one could answer that question. So. Alright, that's it. That's the, end of the, that's the end of the stream, and that's the end of what I had to talk about. So, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not bald. I have all my hair. I just buzz it off. I got a bit of a widow's peak, but... It's, it's all still there. It's like that thing on the back of my head. What do you think of the paid police preparation resources? I don't know what paid police preparation resources are. That sounds like a scam. You, you don't need a, you don't need a special program to like tell you how to take a civil service test. All right, you guys take it easy. We will uh, see. You. I think I got a video coming out tomorrow on the little seatbelt cutter thing, and then I've got videos waiting on the Patreon, and then I got to cut up the security video with uh, Randy Husher, and that should be coming out hopefully next week, talk about doing security work and like the realities of it for somebody that's done it for 30 years. So, see you guys later. Boop.